be. Hello, all you hardcore boxing fans out there. How are you doing? Big P here, but you already know that, don't you? That's why you've tuned in. I'm joined by Matt Skelton from Essex. How are you doing, Matt? Over to you. What's happening? Very well, mate. Lockdown number three, is it? So I uh, just want to get through that. Well, we should get through it, but... You're joking, it, mate. for the world. Waiting for it to get back to normal, mate, really. So uh, it's not been normal for a while, is it? So, no. you know, just um, do what we can. Yeah. It's no, it's no boxing on for a while. Well, not in this country anyway. Yeah. We won't be getting... So uh, I suppose it's all football and, I don't know, just keep yourself occupied and keep yourself fit, I suppose. Yeah. What did you think to... Uh... The news that Kel Brook and Amir Khan might be uh, close to be signed. Oh, uh, couldn't care less. No, Could not care less. Do I know? Pardon? Nobody's bothered about it. Why? Oh, I know. Nah, it's it's a uh, it's a pointless fight, isn't it? Really? Yeah. Pointless fight, and um, it's. No, listen, the fight oh, it's never gonna it's never gonna be um they're, they're way out of their primes now. This it, they're clutching at straws. I mean Amir don't need I don't even think the pair of them need the money really, but how many I don't I don't see a lot of people buying it. I don't I don't see it doing two, three hundred thousand buys if you want to talk numbers. Yeah, I don't mate. I don't. I don't think. I think I'll, 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 sorry, mate. I'll, I'll just think Amir just mentioned it. Just think because there's no other fight that probably could. There's no there's no other option available if he wants to continue fighting. It's and earn a decent crust. He probably has to fight Kel Brook. I mean, there's nothing else out there for him. Amir and Kel Brook, they're thinking, well, what other fight can we get for four or five million each from? Aren't they? Do you see it generating them sort of figures? But Eddie Hearn will try and tell them no. They'll, what they'll try and do, in my opinion, and people I spoke to, they'll try and offer them a flat fee so they know what they're getting. Then Eddie will just sell the show out to death because he'll know that the rest of it's for Match Young and Sky. That's what I think they'll do. Because I think they're at a stage now where they take anything. So you might see a bit of cat and mouse now. You might see Eddie saying, no, I don't think it's going to sell chaps. Pay per view production and all that, and COVID, you're looking at half as what you would have got before. How about I give you both a flat fee, you know, two mil or something? Kel Brook can take that one in. Do you know what I mean? He yeah, won't put on Kel Brooks, but on Amir Khan's, he'd probably top him up a bit, wouldn't he? Because he's a bigger name, isn't he? And then Eddie knows, yeah. he's selling out five million, we're all extras. He knows he's probably going to have to pull in about eight million in pay per view buys, but anything over probably eight mil will be Eddie's, won't it? So, eight million, what's that? They charge twenty quid, would they? Twenty quid, a million buys is twenty million, twelve million it pop for Eddie. So they can easily pay them off with four or five mil, can't they? To fight a crap undercard because nobody's interested in undercard and they won't put a good one on anyway. Well, they don't, do they? On pay per view now, and. Um, I think they'll just give him a flat fee. I don't think they'll get a cut because who'd be interested in that? Who'd want to? Who'd want it? Eddie'd have to sell it to death, wouldn't he? I think it'd be one of them deals. I think for for Kel Brook, he'd have to sell it for that fee. And I think Amir Khan have won a decent flat fee. And then if it does over a certain amount of numbers, I think he'd want pay per view money on top of that, possibly. Yeah. But I don't, I don't know how many, I don't know what the sponsorship would be for that fight, and I, I don't know what the other, the foreign TV money for that would. Does foreign TV even care about that fight no more? I don't, I don't think so. They're not at the peaks. They've not got a belt. They've both just been beat, haven't they? Was I maybe beat? Has any? Be beat. Yeah, they've, they've, it's um. The end of their careers now, and it's it's just yeah. it's been a disappointing end, isn't it? Really, to be fair. I don't know. I mean, he's got a good CV, hasn't he? But Kells, you'd like to think it could have been up there, couldn't it? If he'd have took good advice on and 
not been involved with a promoter that was so greedy. Yeah, Kel Seedling's uh, higher than Amir's in my opinion, but when they look back on the pair of them, career, the, the careers of both of them, I think um, yeah, Khan's got a lot better, a lot better CV. Yeah. A lot better. Two seconds a minute. Two seconds. Guys, what did I say we're doing? Right, you're going to be good. Be good and I'll let you stop up. Got kids on her. Jesus, nightmare. So, uh, Amir Khan against Kelbro. If it happens, who would train either of them? Who do you think? And would there be, um, would there be any intense beef? So, who's the trainer for them? And would there be intense beef or would it be intense... Corn beef, or would it just be spam? What would it be? There's a bit, a bit, there's a bit of intense beef there. To be honest with you, I do think it's genuine. Pardon? Very intense beef. Do you mean intense beef like the Guru, Tommy Allen, and Coogie Bear, or do you mean intense beef like Ben Eubank? Which do you mean? I don't know, I'd be on the level of Ben Eubank, but I'd go for the latter, more towards the latter. What, Tommy? Definitely. No, the other, oh, Ben the Eubank. Other one, I, don't, yeah. I, gen I generally don't think, I, I generally think they just don't like each other, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Do you think Cougar... I don't even think he wants to give him a, I don't even think he wants to give him a payday, to be fair, but if you want another, if you want another payday and that, that's the only money you can get and generate from that fight... Do you think you have uh, Do you think that Coogan's ass flapped when Tommy the Guru Allen put it on him on Asylum? I would disagree with that. You would disagree with that, so you're saying that. I said I, I said I wouldn't. I said I wouldn't. Sorry. No, you won't. You won't disagree with that. No. Yeah, I was surprised, cost. <laughs> you know, for, for years now, I've been saying that Coogan's like a pur purple ackee. This is true. This mate, honestly. Ask John Pascal, ask Yazzie Dickens, I swear to God, ask Joshua. And he wanted to feel Tommy's muscles. And there's a, there's a few stories going around. <laughs> him. Being mm. like a purple hockey type, I swear to God, honestly. Honestly. Mm. Anthony Yard, ask Anthony Yard. <laughs> honestly, I'm not being, I'm just telling you the truth, honestly. Coogan's a bit of a uh, muscle fiend. <laughs> oh. It's the purple Aki of Basildon. I'm speechless, but I don't even know what had to respond to that, I'll be honest. <laughs> it's true, honestly. It's a bogeyman of Basildon. But no, uh, I want to see uh I wanna see Amir Khan against Kel Brook though in BKB. <laughs> Would you reckon BKB? You know we can't you know like I... that with no gloves on. Turning away I'll, after I'll, 10 seconds, getting his purse. Do you know what? I'll watch it, Russ, but I ain't really. I won't. I won't be excited for it. Won't you? Don't, it doesn't. It doesn't really do anything for me. But all right, then. Does, own. does Beefy Smith beat Kel Brook at one five four? Uh, probably now. Yeah. Yeah. Does Beefy beat Amir Khan at one five four? Yeah, beats both yeah. of them. Does Beefy at 160 beat Eubank? Mm. Or is that a 50-50 fight? I'd say Eubank would be the favourite in that fight. But is it a 50 I wouldn't... or is it a 51-49? Probably a 60-40 for Eubank, All given right, that he's a, natural, he's a natural middleweight. He's a natural bigger man, so... All right then, Matt. Well, listen to this. Let me tell you this. So, if Beefy Smith has a forty percent chance of beating Eubank, in your opinion, I think it's a bit higher. If Beefy Smith's got a forty percent chance of beating Eubank, and everybody agrees with that, why aren't they, why are Sky saying that that fight? It's not. It's, it's not, they're not interested in that fight. Why not? Why not? Because 
look at the pay-per-view that they're serving up. Well, Joshua Poole left a 50-50. Pay-per-view? No. Well, no, but Joshua, jo- jo- Joshua's seven- name's... Joshua, sorry, but sorry to interrupt you, Russ. Joshua's name sells, didn't it? That that that's 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 what Joshua's name sells when that that other fight you're talking about, Eubank, Beefy Smith. It it's not. There's nothing really sexy about it if Why you're looking it at it from. Why sexy about that? Where? Because they're not the name. They're not really the. They're not really the names that that do them do them automatic what, what fights. Champions going at it from England. They're not Nate. They're well, you, you Eubanks never been a world champion. Not in my eyes. So Ivy well. Old Belts has got a WBA uh, interim man. He's just waiting to be upgraded. If if everybody else can be passed off as them, why not? No, Mar- Marat has just been. Okay, then. Marat has. Hang on a minute. Let me have floor. Sorry. Show. He beat James DeGale. Who's the other one he beat? Arthur Abraham. That's two world champions beat. Beat more than Beefy, hasn't he? He hasn't beat a world champion yet, has he? I don't think. Although he's fought at world level and won a world title. Did he win a, win a vacant? Can't remember. But still, still don't mean to say that it's not a pay per view because Eubank's involved in it. Listen, if they can feed us the pay per view they've been feeding us, are you telling me Eubank against Beefy is not a pay per view? Yeah, people might make Eubank the favourite, but people made Liam Williams' favourite, didn't they? Twice. Do you know what I mean? Yes, he yeah, I suppose. Longer, he lasted longer with Canelo than probably, I don't know, is it 35, 37 others or whatever it is? Do you know what I mean? And we're talking about world champions that Canelo's dusted quicker than he dusted Beefy. I'm team Beefy, me at the moment. I'm team tennis ball, Ed. <laughs> In the... He needs a he needs a big fight, doesn't he? He needs a big fight. He needs a big fight at fifty four. But there's no big fights really out there for him. You know there? what, right? Do you know what I was doing the other day? I was studying Joe Gallagher's stable, and I thought I was looking at what they'd done. Yeah, they've been they've been manoeuvred, aren't they? A lot of them, aren't they? Right. But do you know what Glenn Rhodes told me years ago when I first started with Dennis? I got talking to him about fighting and all that, and how we were with his amateurs and that. And I could see how he were. He had that bit of personal touch, you know, with the amateurs in the gym and the parents mm. and that. And I sat and watched him. This was a few times before I said anything. And uh, I don't know if he thought I was spying on him for Dennis or what, which I wouldn't do all like that. You know that. And I, and I, and I said to him, you, you've got a, he's got a good touch with him. You've got a good touch with how, how he handled people. He had a bit of class and that. And he said, my fighters are like my babies. You see where I'm coming from? You know, when you have them from amateur and you go through work with them, they're like your babies, aren't they? And I what and I, and I and you know what? I've always liked him since then. I've always liked him since then. That's that's the sign of a responsible trainer who's got that bond from years and years of bringing them up the right way and and nurturing them and seeing them grow, yeah, really, and seeing them get better. There. There's banter in gyms that I go in Josh Wales' gym. They have banter, and also they played tricks on me and that. And I'm like, <laughs> do you know what I mean? They're always calling you bluff. <laughs> but they know to put kids in when you don't, because you know, you're stalwart. They're like, you know, you Mick Wales and Glyn Rhodes, Chris mm. Smedlers. They've been around game, haven't they? 25, 30 years, haven't they? Well, Glyn's been around longer, hasn't it? But Mick and Chris are. From them three there, you're looking at probably probably 30 year on but upwards. Probably 30 year to 50 year or 48. I don't know if Glenn Rhodes is 58, 59, but a long time. You know, you Joe Gallagher's. He's 40 odd year at it. Do you know what I mean? So Dennis is 50 year at it. A- AJ Obson, he, I think AJ's about 35. So he he's been around it 25 year. You know what I mean? They, they know when to release kids into certain fights, don't they? And they know how to protect them. And then I see a lot of this kamikaze matchmaking at the moment. People turning up to get smashed up. And I wonder what wonder where the sport's heading. And I see these YouTubers, you know, all these old time trainers. What do they think? Because some of them have got sons, aren't they? And nephews who fight. What do they think about these YouTube stars that's coming into boxing? And 
picking off world champions in exhibition fights and this and that, and taking a certain demographic of a crowd to watch that when they're not being allowed to develop themselves, you know, the right way. Boxing is only one of the, it's one of them sports, isn't it? You get like a cake, don't you? And everybody can just come in and take a bit of cake. Mickey Rook did it, didn't he? Freddie Flintoff. They all love it, don't they? Oh, we'll come in and get a bit of PR, bit of reality TV programme, bit of PR, or make a film off back of it. They're doing things like that, and I, I just think it's it's wrong. Would that happen in Premier League? Could Logan Paul ring Jurgen Klopp up and say, hey, Jurgen, well, you don't, do me a favour. Move Salah onto the bench. I'm going to play with Firmino and uh, what's the other one? Mane. Well, I'll play to the number 10 position. You're all right. I'll get you loads of views. Would that happen? No, it wouldn't happen, would it? It wouldn't, it wouldn't happen, would it, Matt? Do you know what I mean? So why boxing? Yeah, but... But, but Russ, boxing's only got itself to blame, mate. Boxing as an industry has only got itself to blame because at the end of the day, they make the fans, the fans, they make the fans wait too long for these big fights. They overdo it. it not just here in America as well. And you think, just say, listen, this Mayweather Logan Paul is at the end of February, yeah. Yeah. Right. I know Mayweather's still a big name, but do you think if Spence and Crawford w- would be fighting in February or March when they should be, or a couple of them lightweights, the, the big four, the big five, whatever they're calling them, they were fighting. If they if there was two or three different fights to look forward to that month, do you think people would care about a, an exhibition fight? I don't know. They wouldn't. Well, so they, this might- is the problem. Did Mike Tyson the- against Roy Jones, didn't they? They cared enough about that, didn't they? That took money off the plate of boxers coming through. Boxers turning pro in all countries, America, England, and all the rest of them, other countries. That took food off the plate for kids coming through, in my opinion. Did it Ma- not? Yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe so. The household but- budget is only so much. They're not going to buy 10 pay-per-views a year. So if they buy a pay-per-view and have a get-together with all the friends on a Mike Tyson, Roy Jones night, they're not going to do it a week later to watch Eubank Beefy, have they? Because that money's been took off the table, hasn't it? From the boxing community. You see where I'm coming from? Or they're not going to do it to watch Charlo and Beefy or Charlo and Eubank. Fighters are in that mix. They're not going to, because they, they've spent that budget, aren't they, for that month, and they'll need to probably miss a month now before they can have another pay-per-view. That's what I mean about taking food off the plate. Do you see where I'm coming from, Mark? Yeah, but when I, I, yeah, I know where you're coming from, and I know what point you're trying to make. But when, when you, when, when there's no other big fights getting made, yeah. you, you sort of half can't blame them for just just seeing a niche in the market and just think, all right, we'll just we'll just do this, and we're when 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 basically they're they're basically nicking the money. But what can you? I'll, I'll go back to it again, but. Boxing's got to make the fights. They've got to make the fights to to make these fights irrelevant. No, no, no one would care about these these silly little YouTube fights, these exhibitions. No one would care if there was constantly big fights on every month. Big, good 50-50 fights to look forward to when you're like gonna look. You're looking forward to and you're buzzing for a fight. Do you know what I mean? Listen, mate. So, that's not what fucking way. This is how I look at it, right? This is how I look at it. Boxing. People, somebody said to me today, oh, your channel's a bit out there, isn't it? I went, what, what do you mean, a bit out there? And then he went, ooh, I was talking about you with to, to one of my mates, and we were saying how your channel's a bit, uh, bit cutthroat, isn't it? I went, well, no, it isn't, because boxing's a pretty simple sport, really. A boxer puts a pair of gloves on and he boxes another man. Because they both want to fight. The hard part about it is, it's all the people around them in their ear holes and up their assholes. Somebody said to me the other day, like, you know, a boxer, when he starts boxing, a kid, he turns pro and all that, and he goes through levels, like I like to go on about. He's, he's all eyes, sorry, he's all ears, I mean, he's listening in and all eyes or something, and then further down the line, it becomes the other way around, doesn't it? All eyes and ears or something like that. I've got it all mumbled up. 
some off my box. But you know what I mean, don't you? Fighters, when they yeah. come, listen, don't they, to the trainer, right? Yeah, and they do everything they're told. They do everything that they're told, and they achieve things. Then we get to a certain level, and money starts coming in, and they have somebody in their ear, don't they? Right? And everybody's a fucking expert, aren't they, in boxing? Whether it's mum, dad, or whatever, auntie, mate, social media, everybody's an expert. We all are, aren't we? But the best, the strongest relationship is your your fighter and your trainer, in it. They know each other. So when the train, so when the fighter starts acting out of the ordinary. The first person to see it, it's the trainer, in it? You know, like, we, we all know what happened with we, we Mike Tyson when he was with Custom Matter when he got a few quid, even before he won tight, and he started act, acting a bit different. They all see it, don't they? It's whether you turn the blind eye or not, in it? But then they get the entourage, don't they? And all that everybody's telling them, patting them on back, and then they're telling everybody what to do then in dictating. What happens is... And this is true, this, and every trainer watching this in country will tell you, whether in London, Manchester, Liverpool, Donny or Sheffield. Trainers putting... We've all seen it, haven't we? I've seen it all the time. Trainers putting bandages on fighters' hands before a fight. I've got fighters photos in my house of uh, me stood next to fighters while they're having bandages done. This is before they won a belt, and I've got photos of me where after they've won a belt, and I can assure you there were nobody in the dressing room before, but there were a lot after, if you know what I mean. And they're the people that get into fighters' heads. Oh, you need to be doing this, you need to be doing that. The trainer's the first person all see it all, because it's with them all the time. See where I'm coming from? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, especially a trainer that's gone through the levels. And, yeah, and it's... Um, you know, it's... it's if, it's crazy what goes on, but it's a crazy business, isn't it? It's a crazy There's business. A, it, I, I think, I th listen, you have, listen, you can understand the learning stage about it, but once you get to a certain level, you read that fringe, European fringe world level and that, and then you get, you get over the line to where you need to go. Just let them off. The, you've got to be start making these fights because boxing's only going to get worse and worse and worse. You know, it's, yeah, it's I, I losing changes. losing interest. I want to see changes. That, listen, no offence against all them at board, but you've got problems. You've got people going to boxing shows, we're, we're going around doing a raffle with these buckets for money. It's all a con, you know. It's all a con. I've seen it with my own eyeballs. It's a con. It needs to stop. That stuff like that needs to stop. You've got the same... And these people have had the concession years. They're doing two nights a week, 50, 50 weeks a year. Pulling in a grand to 1,500 on each bucket. You know, it shows. God knows what on other shows. Stuff like that needs to stop, or the money needs to go to the kids in the ring. See where I'm coming from? Because we all know it's crap, don't we? I don't like to see, you know, money. Do you know when I see money under that? You know, in boxing industry, I see it. You know, it's horrible, man. Horrible, and you—it's horrible how it turns people, isn't it? I think you. It's a make money in certain instances is the route to a evil, isn't it? Listen, you know the fighters, right? Something needs to be set up for fighters. This is how I look at it. More testing for brain testing. They could sort that if they really wanted to. That's one thing I'd like to see. I'd like to see pensions. I've caught. I've Pulled board loads of times about this. When they see me, they, oh, they go for a piss. Oh, he's here. And more than likely, I'll be a bit lively on the evening if they see me, especially after 8.30. And I'd reel it all off. i see say, I've got a list here for you. Yeah, you tell Robert Smith this. But they're not going to do it, are they? How often? You know, if somebody gets injured in boxing, we always have a big inquest, then they always say what they're going to do, don't we? Don't they? What happens within two weeks? It's all gone. It's under the carpet and he's forgotten, you know the kid, mate. You know the kid who's died? Right, the kid... Mm. Tell that to Scott Westgar's family. What if he had... Yeah. What if he'd have already had a bit of an injury going into that fight but didn't know it and felt all right? Would that testing have saved his life? We don't know, do we? But it, if it's there, you can save lives, can't it? Look, kids are getting punched in the head, aren't they, and getting messed about with the money. We all know what goes on in sport, don't we, but... 
people need to just think, you know what, these kids are getting knocked a lot, let's get them paid, but let's do it the right way. See where I'm coming from? Does that sound a bit bonkers? But does it, yeah, that is the right way, but will does does that expose a lot more truths and and make the sport a lot more dangerous? And make it sound a lot more dangerous. We will, I think we will know what how dangerous it is. I've been filming with people today, like we went down to Crawford Ashley's. I spent a lot of time there with him today. And you know what? There's two sides that coin to boxing, isn't there? There's, well, it, the interview that's going to come out, well, it's not an interview actually. We've got like a full on production with this. I've like, I'm only going to do one a month for six. It's, it's, it, it, there's a lot, it's not like you can just click a switch and get these people there. And there's a lot of things that are out, surround it all. You know, when you like the stuff, the thing I did with Mickey Fear on that these people, nobody's going to work for no, are they? Right. Nobody's got to work for that. And I've got to, th you know, like, you know, I'm, I've never got time, have I? Right. But if you can, if I can spread the time, we can do stuff. I can go to gyms, go to interview people, but then big production ones, there might only be a chance for 10 or 15 of them a year. But I've been at Crawford Ashley's today and like I, I, I had a good chat with him and that and obviously I'm a sharp as a tack on not day, you know that, don't you? And yeah. Crawford, he's a lovely kid, but do you know what I mean? He's been treated so poorly by the industry. He's been treated so poorly, you know, from like a lower level. Well, even like as so much as British title, the issues with his British title belt and but he thought he would hold a British title belt because he'd won one. And they said, no, you've already got one from a, a, another fight or something. You can only have one or something. Some that we spoke about earlier in an interview today and going out to fight on a Don King show and there's no gym for him and no this, no that, and messing about with scales and all. They pulled every trick they could on him when he fought Michael Nunn. But the other fight, he got through all that, beat the guy and then get the decision. Do you know judges? And this is where the sport for me messes up. It always shoots itself in foot. But you know when you you see it close up, raw. I drove home today, right? I drove home today from there, like on autopilot, thinking about it all the time, all the way home, all thinking, Jesus. And do you know what bothers me? How many world champions is there out there that never got a world title because they got robbed, or because the summer happened? I don't know. But when you see it's the cruel exactly, sport, it's it's the cruel sport, Russ. But cruel as always. Burnt me head but, out. Burnt me head but, but but why do you, why do you think people like yourself rant and rave about these judges? Rant and rave and say it continuously about poor poor scorecards that look corrupt, maybe are corrupt. You know what I mean? Let's keep it on. Let's keep it real and honestly. They might be corrupt, but you know because this in this country. It's the worst for the worst with scoring. This, we can't get away from that. At the minute, it's one of the worst reputations. I know a promoter in New York who told me, uh, a promoter in New York, who told me two weeks ago in a text, he says, do you know England now, and them lads on Asylum will back me, Ozzy Smith, Smido and them, Andy and them. England is now worse than Germany and on a level with Italy and about to overtake Italy. We are that bad now at scoring. We know Vegas has a bit bent if it's Floyd Mayweather or Canelo or anybody, you know, Mike Tyson, they even tri tried to take belt off Buster Douglas, didn't they? But we're now, we're awful for scoring, aren't we? And everybody, have you noticed how everybody's forgot about the scoring from the Natasha Jonas fight against Terry Harper. They've all forgot about it, haven't they, the scorers on the night. They've all forgot about the, the Ritson fight. And don't forget, I'm big pals with Ritson's manager and his trainer. I get on with them really good. And I like Lewis Ritson, but I thought he lost. But And Lewis Ritson's only got one defeat, a split decision, but it looks like he's been discarded like rubbish, doesn't it? By the system. By this system. What have them lads up north done wrong to, to deserve that? They got a decision that maybe they're going to say could have gone either way, but I thought it got beat. But what, what who's speaking up for Ritson now from Matchroom and Sky? Have you seen him on the tellies? 
or on IFL, all we're seeing is Coogie Bear, Billy Joe, Shannon Courtney, Big Doss Femi, Tyson Fury, Tommy Fury 2-0, fighting guys ranked outside 1,000, but yet he gets more coverage than world title-ranked kids. Who's more known to public, Tommy Fury or Lewis Ritson? You know the answer to that. If they had a fight, who'd win? If they fought now? <laughs> well, Tommy Fury's too big for him, isn't it? So, 35 oh. pounds, too big for him. No, I'm on about ability-wise, if it was somebody on the same... Oh, ability-wise, yeah. Ritson is levels above him at the minute. It's all messed up. It's our soul uppers, mate. It's our soul uppers. But yeah, it's not done his reputation no good. He's probably he probably if they'd have probably give the fair decision, yeah, it, it would have probably worked out better for him. Worked out better for who? Ritson. Well, maybe, maybe you because might... he's not a, he's not a massive name, is he? He's not unless it, listen un, unless he sells out Newcastle, they don't really care, do they? They don't really care. He sells out the Newcastle. Out Newcastle. He was selling it out, wasn't he, Ritson? He was selling it at yeah. Metro, wasn't he, Arena or somewhere it's called. But but yeah, he's, 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 he's massive he's up massive. there. Louis Ritson's a megastar up there. I've been up there, mate. He's a megastar. But he's another Josh Warrington. He, Josh is an even bigger star, isn't he? Because he's been selling out Ellen Road and stuff like that and doing other big arenas for a longer period. And he's, he's, he's gone by British level and got European and world and defended, hasn't he? Right, but Josh Warrington, who's mentioning him? They're not even mentioning the kid, are they? Well, apparently he's fight with that, that Chinese kid, Stun. But, I mean, this it's is... This is, this is a, it, this, me, you know. Pardon? I believe it all when I see it. You know, all this it's done. It's yeah. Done. Do you remember Hopkins against Cleverly, done deal? I was running around like an headless chicken when that were a done deal. I couldn't believe it. Yeah. In days when it were forums and a bit of Twitter, there were none of this. And I was like, oh, God, oh Hopkins against Cleverly, what, what, a, what a clash of styles. I was like, messing myself into a stupor. Anyway, what happened? It was all... Bernard Hopkins didn't even know about it. Somebody sent an email to his team and according to people behind the scenes, oh, we've sent you an email. We're in talks, aren't we? If somebody t- emails you back and says, we'll get back to you, does that mean you're in talks? Hey. Smoke hey. and mirrors, in it, Russ? Hey. Smoke and mirrors. Do a favour. You know what I mean? <laughs> Russ, what happens now? Now we're in lockdown. I can't see any shows, even behind closed doors, happening before... March, we're yeah. T- we're talking a lot of shit on here on Zoom, aren't we? For the next few months, we're talking bollocks. Well, what 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 happens? To these all these fighters that need to get out, yeah. Where did they, where do they take this? But where do they take? Because they've got to take the show on the road now and take it to other countries. They got to, they've got can they? You can't afford to not do shows for the next two months. Surely not. So look, what what where are they going to go? Are they going to stay in Europe? Are they going to? Are they just a, a sky going to satellite, uh, satellite us and beam it from somewhere else, and just the fighters and the teams go over there? Because to be fair, if he's, if if boxing behind closed doors is gonna was gonna it was gonna be for the next couple of months anyway, it doesn't matter where it is if it's in another country or not, does it? So, what's your what's your opinion? What, and what happens? I think that. What? Who, who do you mean fighting like? Fury I'm talking about like normal. I'm talking about yeah. I'm talking about normal Sky shows like. You no know, Sky. No, no. You know what I happens to it? I hope they end up on Skid Row. I hope they end up on Skid Row. I hope Adam Smith signs on Dole. I hope Adam Smith signs on Dole, mate. That's what I hope. I hope he signs on Dole. Adam Smith's car registration, B-E-A-1-1-Y. That's his car registration, mate. It's a Porsche, mate. Trust me. Go, have a check. Go check it out. I'm pulling your leg in. He's got a train pass on the London Underground. I bet he has. He's an underground monster at night. <laughs> Adam Smith, and your computer into the nearest cop shop. 
You know he's a wanted man. You know. Hand it in. Because you know, you know. It's a stolen it's cop. The, <laughs> the, so the normal sky shows, Russ, where did what happened? Where where did they end up this year for the first two months? Well. Like an Evanisti and Kelly. We all want we we all want to see that fight. That's a really good fight, isn't it? No, really good fight. Do you know what? I, I wanted to Josh Kelly could have could have this has dragged on that long. It could have played into Adam Booth's hands. Adam Booth now he's pretty sharp tactician guy, isn't he? And all that. He's you know, he knows game inside out. He could be thinking, oh God, another four or five months and they'll be proper ready. You know, they would have got up matured and all that and David and Evanesian would have got a little bit older and you know Neil Marsh and the team around David Evanesian is it Carl Reeves and them they'll all know this that because this fight's dragged on that long now hasn't it that at first it was a kid not that far better than novice against a kid who won a WBA world title am I right yep so even he's a former world champion. He's been in with Shane Mosley as well, going up against Josh Kelly. And I think at the beginning, it were a bit too much for me. I think they sat down and thought about it. Because even he's he's not a 10 in every category, is he, across board? But he's, he's like not as good as Billy Joe, who you give like a, probably an eight and a half, a nine across the board. But he's like a seven and a half, eight across everything that he does, isn't he? He's a good solid former world, world champion, isn't he? Do you think, do you he's an all-round, 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 all he's a like good a fighter. Frotch, isn't he? Well, frotch, yeah, basically. In some categories, he does get tens, doesn't he? But in the others, it's eights and seven and a and eights, isn't it? But you see where I'm coming from? So he's a good, solid former world champion. Josh Kelly, you'd have to argue, is he British level? Do you see where I'm coming from? But now the time's passed. That fight now is an intriguing fight, isn't it? Do you think? It was, intri- it was intriguing when it was all- to have happened last March, but unfortunately, COVID got that fight. And really, it should have happened in the lockdown, Russ. It should have happened. Uh, sorry, at the at the um, should have happened at the um, the fight camp thing, or. or or even another show. It should have it should have happened by now, but obviously they've dragged it out and they've dragged it out. And oh, listen, I'm still intrigued by it, but the fight's got to happen, and it's just getting ridiculous now. So they need to do something where they get on sometime in February. Yeah, you know, because it's not fair. It's not fair on the fighters either. And I think that they need to. They both need to progress in their careers and get the fight out of the way. Because I'm sure David Evanesian wants to beat Josh Kelly and go on to get himself a bigger fight and put himself in that springboard in that fringe world title mix. You could see David Evanesian beating Josh Kelly on points and went on to get a world title shot, couldn't you? He's he's a perfect voluntary, isn't he? He's been in with been in with Mosley, Lamont Peterson. Yeah. Uh he's been in with a few Few good names. He, he's he's perfect for one of the Americans. Matchmaking, has he? He's not been wrapped in cotton wool, has he? No. And do you think Josh Kelly has got the skills to pay the bills and the elite trainer, but he ain't got the experience yet? Do you think of being in big time fights? You know when he needs to go to the well. The other kid's got that, and he can go to the well because once you've been there. You know it's always there to go to, but when once you've never been there, it's a bit hard, isn't it? You think? Yeah, I mean it, it, the problem is, Russ, we don't know how good Josh Kelly is, do we? We we, we know about he, uh, uh, David Evanesian, but we don't know how good how good he is. We've never seen him in a a meaningful fight, have we? So uh, to be fair, I don't know the answer to that question. But yeah. on experience, yeah, you'd have to favour David Evanesian, but. Yeah. In, it's, it's, it's a fight that needs to happen because we need to find out how good these kids are. Yeah. And uh, seeing progress in their career. All so. right. Then. Mo- moving on then. Moving on. Uh, what did you think to Luke Campbell against Ryan Garcia? What did you think to that woman going speaking to Ryan Garcia's dad? I've just seen that today. 
going on about the sperm in his nutsack and all that. What were all that about? That were proper rimming, that wasn't it? Did you see it? Yeah, I don't, I don't think, yeah, I see it. I, I think it was a light-hearted bit of banter, to be fair. I and mean, it's, yeah. it's come, it's, it's it, uh, yeah, it's just, I don't think really meant anything by it, but it's just, it, the way she delivered it was the wrong way. And I see Twitter went mad and, and whatnot, but... Um, I wish I could get back on Twitter. Well, All them people yeah. that were setting Porky's Corner accounts up on Twitter, keep doing it because you're going the Porky legend. <laughs> people come up to her and they go, I joined, I, I, I followed you on Twitter. <laughs> Fuck oh, you are. Followed you on Twitter, mate. All right. I went, I'm not even on Twitter. <laughs> Fake account. Fake account, you trolls. I do miss but, it. I do on, miss it. On, the Luke, on the Luke Campbell fight, Russ, I, I, you know, watching it, I was just disappointed because it's just another Brit getting, going over to America, just getting fed to a big, big name. And... Um, do you remember when Carl uh, Crotch went over to America and dusted Henry Porras and uh, and school Glenn Johnson? Do you remember that? Right. It, and all these other other Brits seem to fail over there, don't they? Do you know what I mean? Majority of them, don't they? That'll kill them, <laughs> won't it? All haters. <laughs> Henry Porras. <laughs> the last decent meaningful win. Went over there when he were a novice, though, to fight Henry Porras. But, I mean... It, the last decent win was probably Brooke beating Sean Porter. Porter I can't Kel know. Brooke, right? I can't... I wanted Kel Brook to win that fight, but I thought he got beat. <laughs> I thought yeah. it was a draw. To be fair, I thought, I thought it was a draw. I told you. I it by a round, mate. I could make a case for a draw, but I couldn't make a case for Kelly Brook for a points win. Well, funny enough, I, I, I bumped into Johnny Nelson after that fight in Marbella, yeah, and I told him I thought it was a draw, and he, he, he didn't argue with me at all, so... I put some on here for, for fans, for boxing fans, for hardcore boxing fans, here, listen to this. This is how much a crybaby Johnny Nelson is. This is how much a crybaby he is. Video of a day, what were it now? few days ago now. Elmets of the year 2020. Johnny Nelson got a silver, so he got a second prize, didn't he? He got another second prize, didn't he? To go his WBO. <laughs> he got a he got a silver, didn't he? He got a silver. Silver medal for Elmets. They voted. You know what they're like who are oh, oh, backing me. Yeah, everything has to be watched. Every penny that's spent, every every email and all that, I'm like, I'm just like a number, aren't I? But I front it out, don't I? Because I've got a bit of front, and I, right? and I've got a bit of character, so I front it out. Uh, listen to this. Listen to this. This is Johnny Nelson for you, right? Johnny Nelson, aka the Entertainer. Hold on a minute. Oh, that's ah. Uh, you know, when I go to the R's, I always think of that Lorraine on Sopranos, you know, when Phil Leotardo blasts it with, in front of Yellow Pages. Next time, there'll be no R's. Here we are. Johnny Nelson. Right. Johnny Nelson. Right. Oh, hang on a minute. I need to show you a photo first. Sorry. Oh, hang on a minute. That's Johnny Nelson because he's blocked me. So I sent him, I sent him helmets and I put, take him. I sent Johnny Nelson helmets on WhatsApp and I put, take a bow, son, take a bow. But he's, anyway, there's a picture of Johnny Nelson. I'm going to show you a photograph of Johnny Nelson. He'll howl at this. This is Johnny Nelson's profile photo. Johnny, come see me. Uh, Oh, look, did I send it? I have to go into. Oh, here we are. I sent it. I sent it. Aussie Smith. Oh, Smido. I sent it. Smido. That's Johnny Nelson's photo. Can you see that? Johnny the Entertainer Nelson. That's his. That's his photo there. Corner. Can't really see it to be fair. Can't you? I don't know, man. I'll, I'll tell you mm. what I'm going to do then. 
Stick it in the editing thing. Stick it. Send it to your editing guy. Stick it in the editing thing. Shut him there. That's him. Yeah, that's, that's him. him. Right. Let me show you him now. This was this was Johnny Nelson. It eleven minutes after the video. <laughs> Oh, no face on thing. That means you've been blocked, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. Been up seeing people oh, again, in you? I've had his number ages anyway. I'm not really bothered. I saw him at that. Buncey rung me up. He goes, do you want to go to Journeyman Premier? I goes, yeah. So I went. Lee Buncey is Mrs. Jackie, is it? Went up there to Sheffield. VIP'd up and all that. Sat up front, me and Buncey. I was yeah, I should go then. He goes, yeah, go. I can't go. I'm going back to Jersey. So I've gone there. Me then. So me, uh, Bonds, who was sat on front row. A really emotional film. Have you seen that film with Paddy Considine, who stars in it? I've not, no, I've not seen Journeyman. it. People should go watch that film, Journeyman. God, it, at first I thought, I didn't, I didn't get it. And then he went on a really emo, emotional roller coaster. So anyway, we're watching film, me, Bonds. Bonds has got a part in film, so he's like, He's all in court, isn't it, Bunce? He's a ringside guy in film. Who interviews him after winning a belt and that. I think it's a title. So anyway, we watched him. And it ended. It had a really weird ending because he, he'd, he'd got, an, he'd got a, a brain injury. And a lot of people said the film were based on Jerome Wilson or Paul Ingalls' story. Or, and I didn't really know what to believe, but... I watched it, and anyway, it all went silent to end. This is how deep the film went, and I was like, Phew. we're really deep, and I was like, Phew. at the beginning of the film, I was like, Phew. as I got into it, obviously, I'd had a drink and whatnot. At the end of it, I was like, we're close to tears. I was like, Phew. I feel like going, oh, Bunsy. <laughs> I start crying, but I didn't. I like... Phew. Took a deep breath and it was silent in this arena in Sheffield. And I stood up and I started clapping. I was first one up at everybody there. And when we turned around and left, we walked out. I seen Johnny Nelson. I seen you, Johnny, sat it back. And I went like that. I looked at you and he looked away. He crawled off like a spider. He didn't want that porky smoke. He were with that uh, junior waiter and that. Him who used to have that Peugeot dealership in Rotherham, is it? You know, the white haired guy who's in the corner. I've had a sauna with him at LB Hall. Is he called is it Carl? Dominic's right hand man. He's supposed to be a decent guy, like. So he's had a few chats with him. He's all right, actually. I've heard Dom's all right. He just. Uh, yeah, well. Dom's all right. He just likes a bit of spinach, don't you, Dom? Come see me. He does like his spinach, man. He does like his spinach. Get Dominic. Why don't you go on? Have you seen what he's put out today, Dominic Ingle? He sent me bonkers. About, I'm on, Steve uh, Wellins, this is the value of the week. This is the value of the week. Wait while you see this, what Dominic Ingle's put out today. Oh, my God. Dominic Ingle, a.k.a. a human tool. Dominic Ingle, what's it called? Oh, by Doc Nate... Uh, the Naked Chef Real Meals by Dominic Ingle. Is it? Oh, no, that's what the text me mates put. Real Meals by Dominic Ingle, but they've got him in buff. Dominic Ingle is in the buff. Dominic, come see me. You're not worth a Meg. I'd mully you. Look at Dominic there on there, mate. He's got fuck all on and an apron. What is Dominic no. Ingle? What's happened to Dominic Ingle? I a remember man, a, a man, a, a man of many talents. Russ, he sings, he cooks, he trains bad, boxers. Dominic's not a bad trainer, actually. We do give him a bit of stick, don't we? He's been around it since he was a little puppy, hasn't he? But there's Dominic Ingle there, right? In a John Rambo, he's got a John Rambo apron on, right? He does crack me up. Look at Dominic there, John Rambo apron. Look at that. And he's in the buff. You know, Dominic used to be in a group, you know, and he was lead singer in this group. And I swear to God, and he won't mind me saying this. This is true because I'm from area, aren't I? Listen to this. Dominic was lead singer in this, like, it was like a poor man's version of 
take that. Now, years ago, one of take that's first singles, everybody thought they were not batting for a proper team. They were doing this one uh, video and they all had like food dropped on them and people were rubbing wet mops up them and all that. A bit weird and a bit, you know. But Dominic, this is a true story. Ask anybody from that Ingle gym. Ask the Spice Boy, Ryan Rhodes, Ryan the Surgeon Rhodes. Ask anybody. Ask Mick Whale. Ask Glyn Rhodes. Ask Dennis Hobson. Dominic, ask Richard Towers. Ask that, that him over my prison prison governor. Him will give me, uh, put me on basic in donkey shots. What's he called? British champion, Brian Anderson. Ask him. Dominic, well, I'd like the village people outfit. This is after they were working at Sainsbury's on doors. Dominic had the village people out, outfit. You know, like chap pants and all that. Then they yeah. stripped off during the song, but everybody, he has got a good voice though, hasn't he? But they stripped off naked and he's giving it all this, you know, giving it the Mike Mensah. They stripped off to the skids in the song. So they stood there in the shredders singing. He what lead singer, Dom. And, but he had like a ginger comb over or like a spiked, you know, like a tall flat top, but there were no in the middle going on. It were going like quiffing over and that. That was years ago, mate, when I, when I had a mullet. Obviously, <laughs> he's, he's done Sainsbury's dormant and job, and so it didn't work out for him, did it? But now, every time I turn on my TV, I've got Tony Bellew, Dave Caldwell, or Dominic Ingle. Dominic Ingle is in our lives now. What we're going to have in a few years to come is Dominic Ingle, the book, then we're going to have Big Dom, the movie. You'll have Big Dom, and he'll be like some like Vin Diesel character. I'm telling you, Matt, you think I'm joking, don't you? I... You don't think I'm joking, don't you? Dominic Ingle is going to be a big star. He'll be in everything. He'll be on... Uh, He'll, he'll be doing commercials, you know, adverts on TV for lawnmowers, swimming pools, wader drink. He's, he'll be bringing out his own Big Dom uh, way drink. Uh, it'll be, be Big Dom spinach. But you've already got Big Dom cookbooks. You'll have sit-up machine. <laughs> Do you know what I heard today? <laughs> somebody told me, I swear to God, somebody told me this. I mean, Denim, it was a bit of a boxing nut. He said that Dominic Ingle's on about bringing the bull worker back. <laughs> you remember that, the bull worker? Yeah, I remember Matt, that. do you remember bull worker? <laughs> Dominic Ingle's going to sell the bull worker in Freeman's catalogue. I'm telling you, man. Last week I was like, listen, you great big Rambo type bloke, and now look at me. <laughs> Buy this twenty nine ninety nine. <laughs> Excuse me. Sorry. You all right there, Matt? Anyway, moving on. What do you I'm think? Good, I'm about, good. What do you think about the current situation, the legal situation with Tyson Fury, Bob Arum, John T. Wilder, Al Heyman, ESPN, PBC, Top Rank? They're all mixed in. Shelley Finkel. They're all mixed into a into the pot and the park Tyson up. Now I've mentioned this in a, in a, on a few videos and you know, I mentioned this, don't you in April, don't you? Am I right, Matt? We, we did mention this on our channel, on my channel. So do you think Tyson's parked up? If not, why did Frank Warren cancel the announcement on the, the, the we, a couple of, before the Caballel fight, we were going to announce it, weren't they, on the Monday, Tuesday, they didn't. Then they came out and said, oh, it's legal issues. But we called it, I called it months ago, didn't I? Do you know when there's that much money around and you've got that many forceful characters, there's always going to be a clash, isn't there? And it's not a governed sport. Do you agree? I agree. I think um, I, I, I think there is a lot big gown behind the scenes. People ain't speaking about it in public. Don't know why, obvious reasons, because they're they probably want to get out of it and go straight to the Joshua fight because the Joshua fight's probably getting made or there to be made. You know, I don't think they care about Usyk. So, but uh, obviously yeah, that is a massive. Throw in here as regards their thoughts. They at care... the minute, yeah, he is. All right, That's all they care about is making that fight. 
Let me ask you this. Who does Eddie Hearn care about on a scale of one to ten the most in his boxing life? I'm not talking about his private life, but which fighter does Eddie Hearn care about when you go when you go down the list? Big Dos Femi, number one. Who's number two? Um has he got a number two? It's probably someone like probably maybe maybe a Dillian, maybe a Dillian White. Right, so it's not really, it's not really his fight, is it? It's, right. it's, it's he hasn't not got a contract. Yeah, got a contract with Matthew and Dylan White. But let's say we all we all base it on Dylan White, Eddie Earns number two guy. Do we agree? Yep. Right, and who's Eddie Earns number three guy from Britain? We're talking about here, not not America, because it's all a bit complicated over there. Let's go through the British. So Joshua number one, Dylan number two. Who would you say number three? Who do you care about the most? Number three, Eddie Earn. Come on, let's hear it. Um, Has he even got a number three? Tough, isn't it? It's a tough one. He cares about who's who's going to make him money, Russ. Yeah, but who's his so maybe number three? A, who's his number three? Maybe a... Maybe a, maybe a no, I, I, no, I, I don't. So who's his number three? Man? All, Give me a name. You must know one. Probably Billy Joe Saunders. Billy Joe Saunders, right? He cares about Billy Joe Saunders. As Billy Joe Saunders, so you're gonna go Joshua White Saunders three. Who's number four? Would and, you say Chisora? I'd say I'd say Connor Ben. Connor Ben four. Who's five? I'd say Chisora. Oh six. Katie Taylor. Katie Taylor, yeah, Katie right, Taylor. Right, so that's Eddie Earn's top six. Have we put Eddie Earn on a bigger pedestal than what he should be on for having a top six like that? Joshua's been handed to him on a plate. Am I right? Olympic gold medalist. He looks the part. It looks like Charles Atlas, doesn't he? So Joshua's on the plate. Says all right things. Does all right things. Got a bad a story. They're making him out to be some roadman gangster. Uh, but if truth be known, everybody knows that them kids that got arrested with me put them all in, didn't he? So we know what, what his gangster stories are like, don't we? Too weak and ready. Mm. To feel that's it. He's hardly gangster, is he? He's hardly an OG. But Joshua number one. Dil. Uh, Oh, did you say number two, Dylan? Yeah, Dylan White, I'd say. Dylan White, number two. So Joshua, number one, handed on a plate. Dylan White, number two, won a, break in, won a vacant British. He's not done anything above British level, am I right? Has he won out above British level? No. Uh, he, well, he's beat yes, Joseph no, Matt, Matt, you need to answer yes or no. Has he won out above British level? <laughs> not a belt, No. No, right. So he's got a British vacant against Ian Lewinson, yeah? The rest of it is trinket stuff, isn't it? Right, fair enough. But he's had five pay-per-views. He's looking for his sixth. So who's his third? Who did you say? Connor Ben? No, I'd say Billy Joe Saunders. Billy Joe, right. Billy Joe did all his graft with Frank Warren, didn't he? Am I right? Yeah. He's never delivered a world title for Billy Joe, has he? And Billy's never had a pay-per-view yet, has he? His fourth, we said, were who? Chisora? Connor Ben. Connor, Connor ben. ben. Connor Ben's not one of British. Who's his fifth? Chisora. Chisora. Ten losses. Never won a world title. Who's his sixth? Katie Taylor. Spoon fed. Because yeah. there's nobody there to fight. So, why is Eddie Hearn's profile so big? Do people fucking get it at last, what I've just explained to you? There is big six. So why is everybody saying he's this big fucking roadman gangster fucking promoter? Is he? Is he, Matt? No. He, he, no he's, he's got Daz he's just a, this guy here, and he's got IFL, Boxing Social, behind the gloves, and seconds out in the fucking middle, and all the media doing the work for him. And plus he forces it out everywhere. But when you scratch down on the fucking body of work... What the fucking hell are we looking at? Is that it? Is that it? Let me go for a piss.
I just think that we're all getting carried away with this fucking Eddie Hearn's a fucking big roadman killer. Scratch the surface, it's just like his dad's CV. His dad's just come out on this Trish Dixon thing. Have you noticed Trish Dixon's just interviewed Eddie Hearn's dad? Have you seen it? It's it's not out yet. It's out on his Patreon, isn't it? But I've seen there is four a minutes of it. There's four minutes. And yeah, I've seen it. Yeah, I've seen the that. same thing. Let me tell you this. I already knew that anyway because I've read Eubank's book. Let me tell you this. Chris Eubank, right, won 19 world title fights. 19. Nigel Ben, Graciano, and the other two, I can't even remember the names. They were that foreign. So who's the other 15? Who we beat? He was navigated. The five fights that Chris Eubank lost were all on Frank Warren's shows. Carl Thompson twice. Joe Calzaghe twice. I was ringside for that. 1997 for Monty, my 27th birthday. And the other two fights he lost, uh, pro it's probably gone from me now, like, from that raging. But he lost five times, didn't he, Chris Eubank? Five times. Do you know what I mean? Now... And he had a couple of losses as well. But point I want to make is that he was supposed to be this roadman killer going on a world tour with Sky. Where did he go? Wales, South Africa and Scotland. Or oh, Scotland, South Africa and England. Or something. He didn't do anything, mate. But Carl Thompson twice, Joe Calzaghe. Who are the two losses of his record? Um... Cole, did you say Cole Thompson? You did, didn't you? Carl Thompson twice, Carl Zaggett. Who were the two losses he had in? It's that fucking important. We can't even find it, can we? No. No, it's not significant, is it? Watch this here. Ali, do me a favour. Tell me who Chris Eubank lost against because I've got short-term memory loss. You know I'm on them tablets, don't you? He lost against Cal Zaggy and uh, what, what, what were on about the other two? Carl Thompson twice. Who were other two losses that he had? Oh, I want it. I just press box out right? back on here. Get on box out. Right? Two sets. Well, let, let's have a look here because and it's accountant by name, accountant by nature. They were selling a load of bollocks to us, like they are. He lost to uh, Steve Collins, Russ. Ah, oh, Steve Collins twice, the other two, Steve Collins. And let me tell you this about that fight. Eddie hates it when this comes up. All you are calls out there, go and Google this. Steve Collins versus Barry Hearn court transcripts. Go and Google that if you want to know about them fuckers from Essex. Let me tell you. The rules are there to be manipulated, so you can't blame them. But don't tell, don't anybody tell me that these people are fucking anybody's mates. This is my new best fighter. This is my new best friend. My fighters are my family. Not a bollocks, mate. Go ask Lee Purdy about that. About family. Go ask Lee Purdy what they've done for Lee Purdy lately. We all know about that, don't we? Sat him in the sauna till they were collapsing. <laughs> You know, what, Do you know what the problem is, Russ? The people don't ask him. He he sets the narrative himself. Yeah, listen. He's, you know what? You know what right? listen, he's master. He has mastered it. You can't deny it. He's mastered yeah, setting it. the narrative. Yeah. You're not listening. Let me tell you this. He got a bit. Eddie Earn got a bit funny with me in the email once. I thought, okay, if he'd have done that to me in probably 1995 and that, and I've gone down to his gaff. I'm not talking like them offices. I've gone to house. You know what it is. I'd have gone down, but he's lucky that I'm 50 now and I'm past it. Still got loads of plenty of bollocks, but it would have been a different story when I were in my 20s. Do you know what I mean? He would have been in a lot of trouble, mm -hmm. and I'd have been in a lot of trouble as well, so it's maybe good, isn't it? But And I thought, and I've heard a few other stories, some I can't even say on here, but fucking hell, man. You think you're like a fucking little spoiled silver spoon, little prick like that, fucking be dictating to people? I don't fucking think so. I won't have that. I won't have it, and too many of them are fucking having it. But like, like you've just said there, it's everything's stacked in their favour, isn't it? So we have to give them credit for manipulating the system. But Steve Collins fucking di didn't didn't let him, didn't didn't let them uh, manipulate him, did he? 
and to be fair, nor is Eubank soon the junior part. He's not part. He's not danced to their tune. No, um, Eubank I think junior, he's shagging. Uh, and he's shagging somebody, or no, or, or no, or something like something. I don't know. You know, he, the, oh, oh, it's Frank Smith in it. Goes with his sister, doesn't it? Yeah. Why can't they make the fight? What is Frank Smith to Eddie Hearn? He's just somebody who's eyes and ears and a little lap dog. A bit like I were for Dennis, isn't it, really? Do you know what I mean? Fucking runabout. That's all it is. That's all these people do, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? But Dennis has got a bit more polish than Eddie Hearn, hasn't he? Fucking low, better fucking 20 times better man than him. Do you know what I mean? Because, you know, when people talk about Eddie Hearn, relentless, what fucking relentlessness are we talking about here? Relentless, like let me tell you. Look at Dennis Hobson, divorced and that fucking pff, wiped him out, mate. That's relentless when you come back from stuff like that, mate. Or Frank Warren being shot and coming back. That's relentless when you've got banks after you and all that, and everybody after you and wanting money off you and and people who've been in prison like Richard Towers and coming back, you know stuff like that. Or Mick Whale, fucking. Uh, Mick Wales got a tumour on his spine and getting up every day for the last 15 years and battling through that and training kids. Then people are relentless to me. Do you know what I mean? That's Not adversity, Ross. Yeah, who, who were like, oh, I don't know whether to get an XR3 or a, or a, 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 what was it? A Nissan, a fucking Nissan, whatever, 2000 or something, S2000. I don't know yet because I've passed my test now. What? And he ended up with what? What did he end up with? I don't know. Fucking Mark III Escort or something. But point I want to make is, Eddie Hearn's not had it relentless. So all these after parties and all these dudes that he goes to and everybody's patting him on fucking back and all that and he's walking around with his big wobbly. He come in my company once and his head were wobbling and all over. I'm not going to say what I said to him. I says, do you know what? I don't like the cunt. He goes, why? Well, goes, his head's wobbling all over and he's walking around going, all right, mate, all right, mate, all right, geez. Giving it all that Essex shite. You know, like, People down where your way talk, and I thought, yeah, I wish I were a bit younger, and it wouldn't, I won't approach with any of this shit. And everybody's dances to his tunes. You've got Coldwell there, Richard Poxon. And I'm stood there, looking and like you're laughing and laughing and joking like they've all been. Do you know what it reminded me of? Like they've been in prison, and they'd come out and seen them in the street. Oh, you know when you see somebody you've been in jail with. You're not seen him for two years. You go, how are you doing, mate? You're like long lost brothers. They reminded me of that. And and I, I'm like that guy. They're all laughing at one of Eddie Hearn's jokes. And I didn't laugh because the joke were on me. And I thought, I didn't get that. And I went, huh. Sense of humor is a bit different because he's that used to people hanging out the back of his arsehole. Do you know what I mean? Because it, that's how I look at it. People say you're obsessed now. I just don't like to see a spoiled fucking brat dictate a sport I love. And it's got beyond biblical scales now. They've got every avenue covered. EIS is covered. For what? For the projection of fighters, the conveyor belt. So that's covered. So they've got the cream of the cream. This is what the sports allowed them to do. They've got Sky Sports covered in England. You've got Dazone in America. I ain't got a problem with all this because if it were Dennis and I'd still be with, De with Dennis, we'd be laughing as bollocks off, wouldn't we? But because I'm not with Dennis, and we even went over Dennis, I still had a problem with it. I just think it's not evenly spread now, not when kids are getting knocked about. So they've got EIS at one end, Sky at other, Dazone at across the pond, and they've got a selection of trainers that... When kids want to get on Sky and they want to sign a kid, they say, if you want to, if you want to get on Sky, you're going to have to train with so-and-so. I'm not going to say any names, but we know who the fucking set are, don't we? That seed's planted. You've got to sign with her, and yeah. That seed's, planted, her. that seed's planted in somebody's head and they go back to that kid. What if that kid's been with his training years? It don't fucking matter because that kid's got kids to a business. You're living in a council house and he wants to get somewhere. He knows if I want to get with them, I've got to sign with these. So Eddie's then got eyes on them all. Well, look what happened with McDonald twins. What happened? Some just started stepping out of line. Dave Colwell went running back, didn't he? Telling tales. And they dropped the McDonald twins, didn't they? They're gone now, they're history. 
they'll never be on Sky again. See where I'm coming from? Yeah, That's genuine, gen, genuine good, genuine European world level fighters. You say Gavin's European, wouldn't you? Other ones, yeah, yeah, world class. Yeah, yeah. I'm, well, well, look, look, Lee, look, look at the job he's done. He, he done on Gamal Yafai, and look where Gamal Yafai is now, and look where Gavin McDonald is. It's a perfect exactly. example, isn't it, Russ? Exactly, mate. Look, Jamie McDonald, not Cal Yafai. Cal Yafai. Jamie McDonald. Jamie McDonald, right? This is a true story. Iced Cal Yafai in sparring. That's a true story. But who, uh, But where, where are they both now? They're both gone, aren't they, from Eddie? They're not, Eddie's not bothered about him, is he? What about that? Like, no. This is my new best friend. I've known you, Cal, since I from when you was training with Cal Frotch at the EIS when Carl was training for Bute and you was whatever, being for to the Olympics. We go way back. We are family. Is Cal Yafai and Eddie Earn family now? And is this your brother, Gal Yafai? Hello, Gal. Your family too. Where are they now? There's no families in boxing. People need to get it into their heads. These promoters are not your fucking family. Your trainers, yes, your family. We... Your trainers, your family. He gets up with you in the morning. He puts you to bed at night. He's in camp with you 13 weeks. Your trainer is your man. He's your man. All these others that are coming into the sport, what, who have we got? I'll name a few if you want, because they don't really sweat me, do they? Big Dean White. Is it, Big Dean White. Is it, is it even his name? Is it? Fuck, I know it ain't. I've been told. He ain't got a board licence, so what, how is he fucking handling fighters? Sam Jones, has he got a board licence? No, I didn't get a board licence when I went for mine. <laughs> oh, you're going to kill the policeman. You can't have a board licence. But I didn't get one. I'd have had that three year as some minor role. Then I'd have gone for managers, one after them. That worked plan, but it didn't work out, did it? But the point I'm trying to make is you don't even fucking need to do it the right way. Here's me listening to people like Dennis and Mick Whale and people like that who were saying, do it by book, Russ. You love the sport. Do it by book. And I've listened to the, these people and I did it and it didn't work out. But there's other people coming into the sport and they're promising these kids this and that. They're turning their heads and then they can't deliver. Whoever offers these advisors, there's loads of them, and there's just two there. If you've got a problem, come see me. But there's two there, right? If if these people are offering you deals and you're a fighter, the board can't help you if they don't deliver. You see where I'm coming from? So they can manipulate. It's wrong. You need a board license to do it right. That's one good thing that you do need. And board back, do back it up with stuff like that. So I'm told, but that's another thing. Health and safety, then we've got to board without these not registered managers or advisors. Fuck them off. Get gone, get rid of them, get with somebody who's a manager and registered, got your best interests best interest at heart. Your best managers are your trainers, I think, because they're weird all the time, aren't they? And they talk about it. Why would you want to bring somebody else in? Why? Why? Why would you do that? Why would Brian Clough, back in the day when there were no agents, why would he have an agent? Agents for fighters. The club ruled, didn't they, till Bosman? Russ, I think, I think, I think a, good train, a good manager and a good trainer who work well together, I think that's the perfect combination, do you know what I mean? Because sometimes the trainer look at, the, tra the trainer won't... Uh, it's a bit of a conflict in interest, you know what I mean? And you've seen it with a few trainer and managers, but just to put uh, on the promoting and the TV and that, we do need some, we do need a fresh promoter to come in, a bit of fresh blood. And we need a fresh promoter to come in, in a Warren or in an Earn. No offence against them, but Frank's. Yeah, no. I mean, Frank's not very well at the moment, Frank Warren. He hasn't been very well to us, so we wish Frank Warren well. I've heard he's been, he's been really ill, so let's wish him well, but. Frank's been at it 41 years now. Eddie Earn's family been at it 34 years. He needs freshening up. He needs freshening up. He needs somebody to come in. And who knows? I might even know somebody who wants to come in with people. He needs freshening up. And there's going to be some big surprises in the next six months. So get ready. But he needs new people involved. And it needs... Fighters paying on the night, whether it's 50 grand or five grand. They need paying on the night, cash transfer. 
That's what I want to see. I don't want to see all these fighters hanging around on ticket deals and shit like that. They need ripping up these ticket deals. The crap. The crap. It's not good. Fighters, yeah, the... fighters need to employ somebody to sell ticket deals if it is like that, but it needs to come out at manager's bit. That is end at money. Something's got to happen, or a manager trainer. It needs overhauling. It needs overhauling because it's been going on too long. And like I said, when anybody gets uh, all these people on shows, you saw Steffi Ball, didn't you? I don't think I ever want to promote again when Scott Westgarf died. Well, what did I say then? I said, we will. I'm just saying that because they have to say that. And then a few weeks later, you know, they're going to... Well, to be fair to Steffi, he did, he, did, he did donate a lot of money to Scott's family and that. But point is, it, it, it turns you into a... Not a criminal boxing turns you into just a bullshit artist. And you know, when you see it in raw, it's horrible, mate. I, I look at people like Jane Couch. Look what she did for female boxing. But yet they can't even get her as a pundit on every show, can they? She could do every female fight every weekend, couldn't she? She could work for Sky and BT every weekend for what she's done for the sport of boxing. Am I right? She was the one who kicked doors down, Jane Couch, you know. What have they done for her? You've got Adam Smith running around saying, oh, we don't, we don't, we don't know if we're going to get Jane Couch on. She's a bit out there. A few years ago, she might have been a bit out there, but so what? If you'd have sat Jane down and said, Jane, promise not to punch anybody in back if they, if they get out of the pram, she would have done. But she doesn't suffer any bullshit. But what have they done for Jane Couch? As what she's done for her career, five-time world champion. <laughs> what are they doing then? She's a pioneer for the sport, but she don't get a mention, does she? Of course, she's done, mate, right? Oh, mate, it's Sad rough, thing mate. about boxing. Eh? Sad thing about boxing, mate. It's wrong, but moving on then. Uh, what do you think about Callum Smith against Canelo? What do you think? It's an easy work for Canelo, weren't it? Easy work. Same look. Wasn't There was no varied attack. And there was no, there was, there was no variation to his jab, you know. Just you know, with the jab and that, if you, you can't obviously, early you don't, on, didn't he really? He got injured, didn't he, early on? Oh yeah, but he caught. Yeah, but that's the game. You you, you get caught. You know, he got. Listen, whether or not he didn't do nothing in the third, the first three rounds really. Anyway, he didn't do. He didn't stamp his authority. You need to stamp your authority when you're going in with someone like Canelo straight away, you know. Just to hit him in that chest, you know that that chest, just under that chin there, just to let him know about your power with that jab. I just, I, I didn't see no no variety from him. It was just all looking for one shot, and it was just, it was just disappointing, you know. Just the same same as. Um, the Campbell fight, really, but the Campbell fight was a lot more competitive. And at least he had, at least he had us on our feet. Do you know what I mean? When he not Garcia Dan, which was uh, a good shot. But I don't know where Cam Smith goes now and reinvent himself at light heavyweight. He'll have two or three fights there, and then that'll be him done. I think. Don't really need to hang around in the sport anymore, does he? Made enough money. Alan Smith will need to fight again, but I'd like to see him go to one seven five, but. If, did you know? Did you see all that today on social media <laughs> when one of my videos got shared? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What did you see? I don't. He, he won't. He won't be fighting Callum Johnson. Put it that way. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm on about the yeah, right. video that Joe Gallagher shared on Twitter today, and I got sent the screenshot. Yeah. Yeah. Shout, shout out to Joe Gallagher. Joe Gallagher sharing a porky video. Oh my god, I've hammered him on for year, of it years, and I on here. I'm gonna have slated him for them rematches with Lenara's crawler, um, not giving John Ryder a rematch, and getting Paul Smith a rematch in Germany when I thought he got he, got, he didn't warrant it. Do you know what I mean? When he, well, if you can get it, good luck to him, isn't it? But and then he shared one of my videos today, and my phone blew up. 106 WhatsApp messages. <laughs> But uh, get get him on the channel, Russ. Yeah, get him on the channel yeah, and uh, get. I'm t- get a, have a debate. I'm sure he'll have a good debate with you until you, you know, give you some uh, some juicy stuff. 
Yeah, Joe's a proper boxing geek, though, and he reads boxing news, KO magazine, Ring magazine, Boxing Monthly. He's on Box Rec Daily. He lives it, doesn't he? His wife can't have much of a life, can she? Joe Gallagher's missus. You know what I mean? Well, you only got to listen to the boxing life stories with him to know how passionate he is about sport. Oh, do you know what I mean? Mm. Yeah. And he's been in it sport 43 years, hasn't he? Since ages. Yeah. So he, he, he's done it. He's done it. He's paid his dues. I wonder what Joe thinks about these YouTubers coming on board. It'd be nice to ask him, wouldn't it? Yep. Maybe that should be a goal. Get Joe on here. Will I get slated for getting Joe on? It'd be a good interview, with Joe, wouldn't it? Yeah, have a very good debate with you. Maybe you could explain why you thought, felt that Lenares Crawler should have been a rematch, but I've heard on Grapevine that they had a rematch clause anyway. So yeah, they did. Yeah, they did. Uh, but uh, good luck. That's a manager looking out for his fight. So look, if you get beat, we'll get you another go at it. Am I right? Well, so that was a voluntary, so yeah. a voluntary, but you got to pay in the, the NAR as well because he's a name, isn't he? Yeah, he's, 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 he's a he's name. Got 70% coming over, wasn't he? Or he got good money, Lenar is, wasn't he? But he got good money, yeah. I looked after Caller, didn't he? And he's still involved in boxing. But if Joe Gallagher shared one of my videos on his Twitter, and I know he has because my phone's been read out today, other people have shared them, haven't they? Uh, other. Some world champion boxers share them a few and trainers, but I'm glad they have. If they don't, it ain't gonna affect my life, but because they have, I'm glad. But I feel that maybe Joe's getting a bit of a raw deal from Eddie Earn at the moment. Do you think please fighters? Absolutely, he's been sent to Coventry, and he so to speak, and he Jonas Harper rematch not happened, Beefy Smith. They were going to do wonders with Weefy when they signed him. Wasn't they Eddie and Barry? They were waxing lyrical, Eddie's words. They were going to do wonders. All they've done is shit cucumbers. So they've not delivered for Beefy. Uh, Callum Smith, they delivered at last minute for him. He only got 32 days' notice for Canelo. So hardly delivering, is it? 32 days' notice, but it's how it goes. And who, who, who other kids he's got? That Jose Burton, have they delivered for him? No, he had to go fighting some. Eastern European country and, and lost, didn't he? And it was the other kid that they're not going to leave. Callum Johnson, probably the main one who they aren't turned up for. He drops Beterbia, biggest puncher in world boxing, pound for pound, who's got a world title fight, who's got a world title belt. Am I right? Yeah, one of. Well, he's won every fight by knockout and he's been a world champion a few years now, hasn't he? Yeah. All right. He dropped him in that fight. And notes mentioned, uh, so I, I was thinking, well, it's bound to be a rematch after watching Crawler Linares and Paul Smith Zuga. Bound to be, or it Paul Smith, so Paul Smith Abraham, sorry. So if Paul Smith Abraham's a rematch, and um, oh, what one before that? What did I say? Paul um, Smith had a rematch, didn't he? Abraham. Who were the other? Who were the other Joe Gallagher? Oh, Crawler Linares. So if they're a rematch, this one is bound to be, isn't it? Yeah, but that was it, that's a voluntary, and he was only on the zone for a fight by fight basis. I think Baturbia. So the best thing probably yeah, counts. Callum Smith, Smith do, against Baturbia. You'd have thought Eddie could have mastered some because when he needed to, he got Paul Smith Abraham twice, Carlo Lanara twice, but how come Callum Johnson Baturbia not twice? When Callum Johnson dropped him away from home against some roadman killer. And when, and listen, ask Carl Froch about uh, Arthur Peturbia. Years and years ago, I spoke with Carl Froch about him, and we were both like owls <sighs> about Peturbia, let me tell you. And everybody around that 168, 175, they knew about him. Well, Callum Johnson went in there and every, nobody gave him a chance. I didn't give him a chance. And you, you, he has to be given credit, do not he, for dropping him, holding his own against him. Some guy who's got a better KO ratio than Wilder and Mike Tyson and George Foreman. Hey, eh? and, and he was trying to walk through him. He, and the kids discarded like rubbish. What? He would have laughed. It's a joke, mate. I'm not saying that because Joe's stuck one of my videos on his Twitter. 
Thanks very much, Joe. But I don't get that. And there's nobody got behind Callum Johnson because he's not hanging out at back at IFL because he's got a family and likes to go to gym and then go on. He's not going to be like Shannon Courtney. Billy Billy Joe's always on IFL, isn't he? And all the rest of them. All the rest of the IFL gang. He's not going to be like them, is he? Best thing Callum Johnson could probably do, if he can probably get signed by a top rank and get a decent deal with them, they'd probably be better off going over there, mate. Who's to say that Joe ain't got something lined up with other people in boxing industry at set match room? You don't know, but... Yeah, well. It did shock me in putting it out. I mean, I did not know about it. It shocked me, mate. So, so I look at it. Unless Joe just thinks it's maybe funny. Do you know what I mean? So, well, it's a bit funny because I did say in the interview that I think that Joe Joe had not, uh, or, or I said said it on uh, another interview I've done with somebody else. So I said that Joe never had a vote. I think I did a say, and I think I said it in a video after in one of my other videos after. I think I've said. That Joe Gallagher never had a vote for December. Because when I got all votes, I was like, well, Joe Gallagher's not, not had a vote. It's like unheard of, isn't it? For him to not even get one vote. Maybe Joe's put it out for that. Because <laughs> of that. Well, the the helmets was pretty funny, to be fair, mate. You like the helmets? Maybe. You like that one? That... I was just yeah, it brings a bit of, it brings a bit of comical. It's a bit, it's, it's a bit comical. Just, People probably love it in boxing unless they're getting unless they're getting nominated for it, mate. If, you, just, if you if you're not nominated for it, then it don't matter. Yeah, keep trying to talk. You keep fucking talking over me again. I don't mean to, <laughs> mate. No, I was just on me. I, I was just on my way out, mate, to have a game of cards with my pals. But I just I thought I'd do helmets because I've been dragging it on and dragging it on and dragging it on. Because Dale Nichols, aka Dale the Great, at Dale the Great X. Porky, you're my new best friend and I want to be on Porky's corner all the time. Can I be your helmet, man? <laughs> He's gone up missing list, Danny. Listen, if you want out done, you've got it done yourself. But I like Dale. He's been up to my office, Dale. He's a good lad. But he's gone he's gone up missing list, Dale Nichols. I think he's a bit under the thumb. But he's an hardcore boxing fan. And actually, I was talking to somebody today about his stats. Have you seen some of his stats he comes out with Dale? He nails Eddie Hearn on stats, doesn't he, Dale? He's got his stats right, yeah. Dale is a stat man. He's the voice of hardcore pay-per-view. Is Smiddo's the voice of hardcore racing? Although I think it's Darts now. He's, Smiddo's gone over to Dark Side, hasn't he? Smiddo and his mate with Bins. They've gone over to Dark Side with Bean for Darts. That's what boxing does to you, mate. Where's the best of you at? I might be following him to darts. I had a dart bob when I was 12, you know, when it used to be a John Lowe dart. Do you remember them John Lowe darts? They were like yeah. Cuban missiles, weren't they? You could only get one in each bed. John Lowe had to put 120, a dart into 20 bed. He had to go 1918 then if he were trying to get a 180. You know what I mean? But he couldn't because he had to put a... Because yeah. his darts were that fat, weren't they? They were like craters in, in thistle board, weren't they? A John Lowe dart. <laughs> hey, listen to this. When I first went up to Ed Linton Comprehensive, 1983, I went into this school classroom on H block, right at the top of it like a skyscraper. And, I, and you, they had them desks then. Did they have desks at your school, like a single desk? Yeah. And I opened it, and on my first day, 1983, I was like, well, I swat. And as I opened it, it was stuck with chewing gum. Did you ever get that? A couple of times, yeah. yeah I opened it, I thought, God, I can smell over bubba, but really a bad smelling. And I looked, and as I opened it, there were an empty bag of salt and vinegar walkers on the table bit. You know, the flap that come back. It had this big black marker pen, and it had a picture. I thought, oh, look at that, a missile. And then it had an arrow, and it said, John Lowe Dart. <laughs> I'll never forget that, honestly. And that went in. I don't in the maths when we used to do some maths at school. We used to do this program in maths, this, this whatever it was called. It was called the Smile Program, and we had this horrible teacher called Mr. Egerty. And I always used to look pissed off in class all the time. And he used to say, "Russell, you're not smiling." I said, "I am," but he meant the work. Do you know what I mean? You know, doing the work, yeah. the Smile Maths, it were called. 
you know, like grin and all that. But who wants to grin in a school classroom? But I'll never forget that with table thing about John Low Darts. Because John Low Darts, they weren't like Keith Dellers, were they? You know, with them them spring loaded ones that used to bounce. Because he won it in 83, didn't he, Keith Dellers? Do you remember? Yeah. Uh, no, I'm not a bit, before, a bit before my time. That a bit before John, my time. John Low did nine dart finish in eighty four, didn't he? Hundred gram, boom, boom, boom. How he got them free in, in in each bed every time? I don't know. It must have been precision. You know what I mean? He's from Derbyshire, John yeah. Low. You know. You know what his nickname is? Go on. Old Stone Face. You know what best dart player? Right, a lot of them though. Not Eric Risto. Not John Low. Jockey Wilson, he could butcher anybody any day after 15 pints of baked egg and beans and mushrooms, fried bread, black pudding, brown sauce, red sauce, toast, milk, orange, cup of tea, four sugars. So, but anyway, moving on, moving on. Charlo against Billy Joe, will it happen? Never. Never, don't you think? No, never. You think Mark Tibbs and Billy Joe will last? Time will tell, I suppose. Um, it, it would, uh, I couldn't honestly, I, I couldn't have an educated guess on that, mate, because Billy Joe just does his own thing, doesn't he? Yeah, do you think that Dylan White is talking out of turn lately where he's having a go at Richard Riat on Sky because he knocked back the Lawrence O'Coley fight that was for the world title in the UK? Do you think Dylan White's talking out of turn, saying he should have grabbed this opportunity when he got it, when Dylan knocked back Wembley and Joshua four belts and five million? I don't, I don't think it would have been for a world title, mate, because Gluwacki is the mandatory and he's the number one, so I don't think it would have been for the title. Yeah, he'd have cooked one it, up, wouldn't he? He'd have cooked one up or some interim or something. Maybe so, yeah. Yeah, maybe so, but... <sighs> yes, yeah, it's not... I, 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 listen, when it's a week's notice that you, you don't blame him, do you? You can't blame him for not taking that. Surely not. I don't think Richard Riaporte is uh, ready for a Coley. I don't think that, no. I think he's, he's not seasoned enough, is he? You think? No, he needs two or three more fights at that sort of level. Lawrence Cole has got one of those styles that I don't think anyone is going to be able to master. It's one of them styles that that you make you close your curtains in it, really. Lawrence, come see me. Because I don't want to see... In fact, don't come see me, mate. Don't come see <laughs> me. I'll fall asleep. Lawrence, don't come see me, please. You're a roadman killer with them arms, octopus arms. Who want to pay to watch Lawrence Coley? So, we're Dylan trying to get that kid bashed up, do you think? Not, I don't think so. No, I just I don't know. Maybe he wanted to earn his 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 bit on his bit on him. Yeah, because Dylan's hard to say. Now, he? he's, he's in the David A. mold now, isn't he? Pimping Dylan, they call him. He's pimping kids out now, and he like Joshua and Dylan. Joshua and Dylan and David A. The pimps, aren't they? Basically, <laughs> they're doing to other guys what we've done to them, aren't they? You think? Oh, yeah. Yeah, probably most likely, yeah. What do you think about the EIS at Sheffield that has been going on now up there with the conveyor belt and all that kind of thing, McCracken? I mean, years ago, no professionals were allowed to train the amateurs at Crystal Palace or there'd be a big investigation. But now up there, it seems to be a free-for-all, doesn't it? You've got Joshua training there, a Coley, Boatsy, and you've got Joshua's managing other people now, isn't it? And McCracken there, he's supposed to be head of it. He doesn't go in corner for any, any amateurs, but he's, he's trainer to a few up there. Do you, do you think it's been going on too long? And do you think that somebody behind the scenes could be making sure that certain people get looked after when really the rules state that they shouldn't? Because it's lottery funded, isn't it? Do you think that some MPs should start asking questions? What do you think, Matt? Yeah, definitely, it definitely needs looking into and people need to be asking them questions and say, well, why what why hasn't he got why hasn't he got his own facilities and to train in all these other fighters? It's it, it's it's for the Olympians and the team GB and that is it. For and then for all sports. 
So <laughs> do you think the problem then? McCracken's up there. He's been dipping his bread in both British, in both pro and amateur for that long. I mean, I like Bob McCracken. I've met him long times, but do you feel that he's he, he's the problem? He's got greedy and he can't let it go, and everybody's happy just to pander to Joshua and Eddie Earn. Uh, and the, most and likely, yeah. In England, boxing centre. You think it's wrong? Yeah, it is wrong. It is def- definitely wrong. Yeah, hundred percent, definitely. Yeah, it's not. It's not fair, is it? It's you know, it's top top class facilities. I don't think yeah, it's not. It's it's yeah, it's not an even playing field when you get to use them facilities. Is it, Russ? Let's be honest. Would you, we're not no. we're not being we're not being unfair when we're saying these things, are we? Let's, let's yeah. call it like it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what do you think of the situation then with Floyd Mayweather and Logan Paul? I think they'll fight February, isn't it? Yeah, I think they'll fight. Yeah, yeah. Don't know what the weight. Don't know what the weight will be, but I don't think it. Be, I don't think it matters. I don't think Mayweather cares anyway. I think it's bad for the sport. Uh, Eddie said it'd be good, didn't he? Stuff like that to bring a new base of fans to the sport. But do you think he was saying it doesn't dip his bread? Yeah, it doesn't bring new fans to the sport, not at all. Yeah, not at all, not in my eyes. Ryan Garcia is the person who brings more fans to the sport. Who? Someone like Ryan Garcia, that's someone who brings more fans to the sport. Yeah, not. Not people like that because they just watch their man and then that's it. It's been proven anyway. It's been proven that the, these YouTubers, the fans, zero percent of them only care about watching their 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 person and then that's it. Yeah, that is that's 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 all it is for, for me anyway. All right then, mate. Well, listen, we've had a we've had a, a good a good chat. We've uh, we're nearly done. Oh, we're done another cut of ours. So. We've been. Uh, I think I might go on a heavy one tonight because I'm I'm fed up. I'm struggling with getting into the New Year, and it's quite depressing, isn't it? Very depressing, mate. I need to do a heavy one. I don't know. I'm gonna think about it. I'm gonna have a team meeting. <laughs> Everything's a team meeting, isn't it? Jesus. Yeah. Everything's a team meeting and an invoice. It's happened to will. It's gone mad. But listen, thanks for coming on, Matt. You've been a tonic. What do you reckon, Rocky? Has he been a tonic? Oi, stand to attention. <laughs> uh, let's it's been give a pleasure, Matt, mate. Let, let's give uh, boxing a big shout out. It's 2021. Let's hope we all yeah. get the fights that we want. We all get the fights that these promoters say they're going to deliver. Let's hope we get them. It's an hard job promoting. Let's hope so too, mate. It's an hard job promoting, but let's hope these promoters can deliver the fights instead of spinning utter garbage to us. So Yeah, let's see some competitive fight and give us something positive to talk about, mate. That's right. All right then, Matt. Matt, listen, you take care. Keep in touch. Thanks again. You too, mate. All right. Cheers, mate. All the best, Russ. Bye, Bye, mate. Come here, Rocky. Do you want to go out? Rocky, do you want to go out? Gonna go out. Oh, look at that. Rocky wants to go out now. Hey, when you want to go out? Wanna go for a walk? Get your ball. Wanna go for a walk? Hey, right. I think that's about it, really. Uh, Matt wanted to come on, blow a bit of steam off. We've blown a bit of steam off. Uh, that's about it, really. That's all you can do, isn't it? There's no. What was he doing? What are you doing, Rocky? What you... Rocky? What are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing, man? You're crazy. Uh, we've blown a bit of steam off, and uh, that's all you can do. There's no boxing happening at the moment, is there? There's no gyms open. There's there's no fights happening. There's no amateur fights happening now. There's been no amateur boxing since last February, so it's a bit worrying. Uh, I just thought that boxing ain't going to get left out. So, all right, because it's going to affect a lot of people if it does. So, all right, so peace out. Keep on trucking. Keep spying box.